Hi, I'm Trevor with Night Sky Voyager, and I'm here in my backyard with my 10-inch homemade Newtonian reflector telescope. I just refinished this telescope uh, after several years. It was getting a little beat up, and so I refinished it, made some modifications. But now that that's done, we need to align the mirrors. Since I took it all the way down, the mirrors are totally out of alignment, and so we're going to talk about collimating today. Collimating is simply getting the mirrors of your telescope lined up. And because I recently had this totally stripped down, it's way out of whack. We're going to start going probably a little bit deeper than you'll need to on an average night by aligning the secondary mirror, which since I had this totally removed is not lined up at all. So collimating your telescope is critical for getting sharp views out of it because we need all these mirrors to be in alignment to present a crisp image at the eyepiece. And when I'm collimating my telescope, uh, you'll see different methodology for it, but like I've mentioned, I like to use this laser collimator here. And I think of it as a three-step process. Some people may say just two, uh, but to walk you through before we get started, first I like to check, I'll look in this way, and make sure that the laser that's emitted out of the collimator is in the center of the secondary mirror. Then the next step is to make sure that your secondary mirror is aligned with the primary. And we're gonna to come to this end of the telescope and you'll see this in more detail in a moment, but we are looking to make sure that the laser dot is in the center marking of the mirror. And then the final step, we're going to come down here on the ground and we're going to adjust the primary mirror with some wing nuts that are on the back of this specific uh, telescope and get the dot, the laser dot, into the hole in this target on the inside of this collimator here. So. Really, I like, again, the three steps. One, I check to make sure that the dot is centered, uh, centered on the secondary mirror. Then we will check and make sure the secondary is aligned by making sure the laser dot is in the center marking of the primary mirror. And then the final step is to make sure that the primary mirror is in alignment by moving the laser dot into the hole on the laser collimator. Simple as that. Uh, collimating is a simple process and once you become proficient in it it shouldn't take you more than a couple minutes additionally it's nice if you have one of these laser collimators because you could do it during the daytime while the sun is up it doesn't need to be dark for you to do this and so you could do it while you're setting up so that you can be ready to go as soon as the sun sets but what we're going to do is we're going to start with collimating and here is the secondary mirror right here and you could see that it's, uh, you could probably see that it's at an angle. And what happens is the light comes up from that primary mirror down in the bottom and reflects at an angle off of that secondary mirror into the eyepiece, uh, which is in this focuser here. And so what we're gonna do first is make sure that you could see that this is totally loose back and forth. It'll also slide up and down on this bolt here uh, this is going to be different for every telescope, but for this one specifically, we're going to have to adjust it in the height and also the, uh, the angle to make sure that it's squared up with the focuser here. So that's what we're going to take a look at first. And what we're going to use for that is this collimation eyepiece. Uh, some telescopes may come with them. I think it's also called a Cheshire, uh, a Cheshire collimator. And you can see it has a pinhole in it here. And that will help us to center that collimator in the focuser. And then what we're gonna look at is the shape of the mirror inside. And it's gonna probably be a little bit difficult to uh, capture on camera, but I'll do the best I can. It's hard to capture this on camera, but when you're looking in that little peephole, you'll notice that the inside of this collimator here is reflective with that dark spot that you're looking through. And you can actually see that reflection in the mirror inside, and it makes it a little bit easier to see that everything's lined up. So I actually removed the collimator first, and by leaving this bright yellow cover in here, you could see uh, how we could see the reflection of that off of that secondary mirror, but it's definitely not squared up with this focuser here. So we're going to uh, raise and lower it, and then we're also gonna get it centered. And the way that this raises and lowers, as you can see, there's a bolt on here, there's a matching bolt on down here on this entire threaded uh, threaded rod here. And we could just screw and unscrew those to move that up and down. So that's how I'm gonna do that. And then also, once we get it uh, squared or where we like it in this direction, uh, once you tighten both of those bolts down, it'll hold the whole 
thing in place. So I think this angle captures this pretty well. You can see in here that the secondary mirror is not square to the square to the focuser at all. It's actually off to an angle. So I'm going to take a minute here to get this lined up and we'll come back. So I've taken the cover off my mirror and the first thing I'm going to do is try and square this up as best as I can and put a little tension on that threaded rod so that it holds it pretty close to in place. Next I'm going to insert the Cheshire Columner of Collimator. We're going to look in this hole and what we're trying to see is the total, the, the secondary mirror we want to be a centered in that area in that little peep site and we also want it to be covering the entire area so we're going to move it up and down appropriately until we can just see just barely see the edges of the secondary mirror now that i have everything roughly lined up i'm going to replace my hard cover so that while i tighten it down with this wrench i don't inadvertently drop the wrench on the mirror and crack it now that I have the secondary mirror tightened down, we're going to move on to the fine collimation. But collimating your Newtonian reflecting telescope is much easier with a laser collimator like this one from Hotec that I have here. A laser beam is emitted from here and it'll bounce back and forth through the mirrors and onto this target in here. And that's how you'll know when your telescope is collimated. What's really nice about this, uh, this specific model is that it has this unique feature where it's self-centering, where you uh, these rubber rings on here, as you tighten and loosen this, expand to center it directly in the focuser so that you don't need to worry about an adapter or the compression fitting for the eyepiece uh, interfering with the collimation. So we'll show you how to use that here right now. So right now I have the laser off and we're going to insert it into the focuser. It's going to be important that this target is pointed down towards the ground because we're going to be adjusting the mirror from down here and we'll need to see that target. So for this particular model, we insert it and it'll be loose. You hold this outer ring and turn this inner ring and it will expand those rubber rings and it will self-center right here in the focuser and it's nice and tight and it eliminates all the slop of the that might be induced potentially by the compression rings so i've turned on the laser and removed the cover on my primary mirror and the first thing we're checking is that the laser is in the center of the secondary mirror and you can just faintly see it right there but it is uh, very close to the center there so that's our first check we're now going to move to the top of the telescope and look down the tube for the next step so our first major step is going to be making sure that the laser dot is centered on the primary mirror in the center marking. And you can very clearly see here that we are up and to the left. And so we're going to go ahead and adjust that until it's centered. So secondary mirrors have these adjustment uh, knobs on the back of them that you can use to tilt the mirror to center it. Important to note though is that uh, the way that these work is they push and pull if you can't just tighten them all the way down and so if i want the dot to move uh, this way i will loosen this side and push on that side so that it tilts it more towards the center but you're always having to loosen one side and tighten the other to get this kind of action uh, that way that you don't uh, break off the adjustment knobs so we're going to adjust this quickly here so we could see that my spot is up and to the left here. So I'm gonna start by loosening this slab to put in some slack. And then we'll start tightening this one. And you see as we go, it will move closer and closer to center. What we're gonna try and do is get it in alignment here. So now I have that, so now we can lose it, we can Gently tighten both of those down so we don't get any more movement. And now we need to move it center, uh, more towards the center by moving down and to the left. So I'm going to start by loosening this knob here. And we're going to uh, tighten this one out here. So we can see that shifted back. And so it's really a matter of this point, just doing our best to uh, fiddle around with this until we get it just 
this just where it needs to be. And once it's centered, you can see here now we are centered in that dot. And so I'm gonna tighten those screws down so that we have everything nice and snug. And the trick is tightening that all down enough so it doesn't get out of alignment while you're using it, but also so that it's, uh, that the dot remains centered. So I'm satisfied with the location of this now. So we're gonna go down to the other end of the telescope now and look up at the collimator. So I'm gonna pan over here to the mirror. I don't know if we can get both of these in here at once, but you can see the centered meat dot on the mirror and you could see the second dot uh, to the left at about eight o'clock. So we are not, uh, we're gonna try and move that more towards the center. And once we get both of those in the center, you'll see that start to appear in that target. So I'm gonna try and get both of these items in here. And we're gonna start uh, turning the screws on the back of the mirror, which I will show you a close up of uh, afterwards. can see as I'm turning it we are getting some movement out of the dot and again these so these are usually uh, spring loaded and so it's less of a uh, less of a back and forth more of you could just adjust them as you want and so now we can see I'm close enough that it's starting to appear in my reticle. Sorry, this is a little, <laughs> not the most exciting television ever, but we're going to move this now. Now that we're in here, we're going to do our best we can to move this into that, into the hole. And there we go. So with that, our telescope is now in collimation. I'm down on the ground here so that you could see the back of this mirror and the three wing nuts that you can use to adjust this mirror as you line it up to try and get that laser dot into the hole. Uh, that's a cooling fan I have on the back. It helps bring the mirror down to temperature uh, quicker. But these three wing nuts here are what you can use to adjust the dot so that it gets lined up. One question that we commonly get at public programs where we're helping new telescope users learn how to collimate their telescope is how often does it need to be done? And that answer varies depending on the telescope that you have. So this uh, homemade telescope that I have here, as you can see, uh, it comes apart and all the parts condense into one box. And so these aluminum truss poles here are removed and every time I use the telescope, I have to set the whole thing up again. And then when you are done, you take it and put it all back down. And so this telescope, because it gets totally dis disassembled every time, needs to be recollimated every single time I set it up. Uh, if you have a solid tube Newtonian, uh, as long as it doesn't get jostled too much, you shouldn't have to collimate it all that often. Uh, it's worthwhile checking occasionally to make sure that everything is still in alignment. But generally a telescope that is out of collimation is very apparent because the stars in the eyepiece are not pinpoints of light and they're smeared a little bit or you're not getting totally crisp planetary views. And so it's usually pretty obvious when you're not in collimation. And so there you have it. Your telescope is collimated and you're ready for a night out under the stars. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have any questions or need clarification, please do so in the comments and I'll make sure to respond to every single one of you that posts something there. If you like this video and want to see more content from me, the Night Sky Voyager, make sure you give us a like and ring the bell so that you're notified for future videos. Wishing you clear skies.